Okay, here on Metal Talk, it gives me great pleasure to be here with the messenger, mm -hmm. Mr. Glenn Hughes. He's back. He's back. Because, um, not only we know him as the Voice of Rock, but we can now say a member of Black Country Communion again. And, it's, um, it's indeed a pleasure. And a new album coming out in September the 22nd on Mascot Records, Black Country Communion 4. And um, let's get straight to the nitty gritty, because I think it surprised a lot of people last October when news come out that you, Joe, Derek and um, Jason had reconvened together. Because, you know, five years ago, after Glow, we had a chat in this very hotel yeah. and he said it was almost time for a break, it was over, so... Well, you got me at the thick of it when it was going... It, just so everyone knows, I, I was in a state of, of turmoil because the band obviously was not going to continue and I was hurt. And um, I think everybody was hurt. There was a silence. And of course, what, what needed to happen was you've got to let the river flow and you've got to move on and, and not hold resentments. Resentments are killers, the mm. killing, you know. But I had expectations the band would get together at some point, but I never actually thought about it. And, you know, we got back together and we decided we would make, a, we had to make a killer album. We, this album would not have come out if those songs would not have turned out great. So oh. hopefully people will... And I believe Joe reached out to you first. He did. And what was your initial reaction? He came, well, we had dinner. He, he called me at the Hall of Fame when I was getting inducted to, to congratulate me in New York. And we got together for dinner in LA and I didn't know he was going to ask me about you know, reunion and, and um, I, I, I may have said, which I did say about two years ago, that Black Country will be the last band I'm in. You know, I, I can't see me ever being in another band because, you know, working with three or four different individuals that have different agendas is not an easy thing. So, you know, for me to, to finish my band scenario uh, with Joe, Jason and Derek is, is, a, is a befitting thing to do. And uh, the album's been produced by Kevin Shirley again, who's produced all the previous albums. What does he bring out of the band? Such a good guy. I mean, Kevin, let's be clear, for those people, you know, you classic rock fans, you know what I'm talking about. Kevin is very, very honest and straight down his throat. I have no problem telling you exactly how he feels about the song, about the performance, about your whatever. But amidst that gigantic interior is a very soft, sweet guy who loves family. And he is, uh, if you ask this question to Joe, he would tell you that without Kevin Shirley, Joe would probably still be the greatest guitar player in the world, but Joe would probably be playing clubs. But Kevin, Kevin is driving the car, and Joe's in the back going, where are we going next, Daddy? <laughs> well, we're going all the way. What, what is it that Black Country Communion brings out of Joe Bonamassa himself? Because, you know, he's got quite a prolific solo career, very financial one as well. So what is it, is it, is it that he loves so much about Black Country Communion? Because listening to the new album as well, there's one song that he's uh, sang on and wrote, um, the last song from My Resting Place. It's one of the best songs that he's done out of his whole entire career. Incredible. I mean... I hadn't, I've known Joe eight years now, and I, I never, I've never not seen Joe so excited about an album as this one. He showed it to my house 10.59 a.m. every morning for 11 days in a row. And that's like unheard of for him, you know, and um, I never, I, 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 it's not like I didn't expect it, but his commitment to this album is huge. His commitment to everything he does has got to be huge. But more importantly, my friendship with him has risen to a, a, a level beyond <clears throat> the level it was before. Yeah. A lot of um, respect, apologies, amendments, all taken care of. And how did you uh, write the songs? Did you write all the songs together in the studio? Together. The only two that were written separately he brought in 
his resting place song yeah. for me to help him finish. And I brought in over my Great little fuck him. number, yeah. I brought him in to finish that with me. I brought that one in simply because it, we needed. A, I thought we needed a one last soul kind of chorus, you know. I, I thought we needed a real radio track. I hate to use that term. And he brought his Hadrian's Wall song of yesterday, like a typical Joe song for Black Country. You know, he brought that one in and he was talking to me about what do I think about a lyrical content about a violin on Titanic, mm. and I went, that sounds like an interesting thing to think about. And um, on the album, it's 12, I think it's 12 songs on the album, four of which go past the seven minute mark. It's like four where picks, I think it's two other songs go past the six minute mark. So what, what, did you write longer songs on purpose, yeah, or was no. that just the way it just flowed? Great. Only one other person has mentioned this, Mark. The demos that we recorded, Joe, Joe and I record our own demos together, we duplicated the demos in the studio. We didn't edit them. We didn't like refine them. We kept them in the jamming form. We those songs that we wrote, which are on my iPhone, they sound exactly like they did on the album. We wanted to keep the same feeling. So um, we don't write for specifically to have two minutes and twenty five seconds of a, a quick single. We just write freely, you know. Excellent. And let's talk about some of your lyrical content on the album. Uh, the Cove. Which, you know, is sort of a um, controversial subject. Definitely. Dolphin slaughter in uh, Japan. And uh, tell us why you chose that subject. I'm very much involved as an ambassador for the Dolphin Project. Uh, if you want to just Twitter that Dol at Dolphin Project. It is a company that I've been going to Taishi, it's a sleepy fishing village in Japan, where between February and March of every year a thousand or more dolphins are driven by hunters into a killing cove and they are slaughtered. And dolphins, as you know, are what we all should know, are very intelligent animals. So they are in front of their children murdered or murdered and, and slaughtered for food or for circuses and this is all this since we spoke last time all this has made me a vegan and I'm very much an ambassador to the company and I'm very much involved in, in educating people on on dolphin abuse and I, I am completely charitable to any to ending animal, animal abuse but the dolphin I'm very much well educated on what's going on with dolphins and it just breaks my heart I see footage of things that are so disturbing it, it, it would not be pretty to see okay and um, another song Love Remains it's a song you've written about your parents it is I wrote the song on the plane going to do the service for my dad last April, you know, 16. And of course, I wrote the song for BCC. I finished it for BCC, and I didn't get a chance to sing it till after my mom died. So when I went to sing it in the studio, I was like, I was carrying the weight of both my parents, you know. The, because they're both very close to you, you're the only child, and yeah, well, some I mean, of you spoke regularly about on social media, I mean, you, you were very close, weren't you? In, in, people that know me well enough to know that I am a, a person that is driven by love. It's just, I'm a love person, mm. and I'm not hateful at all. I mean, it's not part of who I am. I never really was when I was a youngster. So, losing both of my mum and dad were like, we're all going to lose our parents, mm. you know, so I was just trying to be of service and, and my biggest purpose on for the rest of my life is to be of service to the rest of the human race. That's good to hear. And um, there is two concerts coming up. Yeah. Uh, we play Wolves yeah. and Hammersmith. Mm -hmm. 
Is that going to be the only two concerts? Is it? At the moment. Yeah. Simply because I've got things I've got going on in January, uh, which will be announced soon. I'm going out with somebody we all know um, next year. Um, simply because you 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 got to imagine this that I have to be working all the time now because I don't know how long after Chris Cornell and Greg and, and yeah. David Bowie, after these people left us, it's like I'm going. Who's next? And you got to ask yourself a question. I, I want to go out and, and work, and I want to yeah. be of service, and I want to. I just want to be around people and do my thing. You, you know, you just mentioned about you know, sort of love, life, and death. Do you believe in the afterlife yourself? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. When I when I when I saw my mom leave, I saw. Not, not physically, I felt she was going to be with my father. It's very, very plainly obvious in my opinion. So, you know, I mean, people will, will debate that. People will, you know, people who are, you know, uh, and, you know antagonist, antagonistic or don't believe in the afterlife or I choose to do that, you know. It's a positive way of thinking too. And let's go back to the band. Um, I just mentioned the two concerts coming up. Um, how much of the new material will be making its way into the set? Have you discussed that yet? Well, I think a lot of it. Yeah. Um, simply because we wrote the songs to fit into this catalogue. There's nothing on Black Country 4 that couldn't have been on one or two. Mm. Well, so I haven't heard the album myself. I think you've got a tough job picking which yeah, songs you haven't to heard it yet? Yeah, yeah, I heard it this morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's all, well, it's all killer no you fiddle. know, look, look, there are, we, we've got so many great songs now. We've got four, four albums and, and um, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking, they're all, they're all so great. <laughs> and um, it's hard to talk to um, Glenn Hughes about sometimes mention the band he was in once upon a time, a little band called Deep Purple. And um, earlier this year at the Café de Paris, you mentioned that um, Drew Thompson's making a documentary about the uh, Come yeah. Taste the Band. Yeah, we're doing it. We're, we're, we're on, we're, it's ongoing. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much a story about when Patsy Collins was murdered and, and the, the genuine consensus that he was with me at the end and I was put in jail because they, they wanted to get their money back and they, they wanted to accuse me of murder and it was very, very, very difficult for all of us. So we're actually doing a documentary on that. How much of that must be quite difficult for you to revisit? Well, they want me to go back to Jakarta and I, that's 1975. Yeah. I've refused to go. So you weren't meant to go there last year, weren't you, I believe? Pardon? You were meant to go there last year for some well, reason. You know, honestly, Mark, I, I don't do things for money, and they want to pay me a lot of money to to go there. I don't need that the money to do that. Mm -hmm. I have to be in a spiritual place to, yeah. to do what I do. Excellent. And um, obviously, Deep Purple, well, uh, Tommy Bowling was a guitarist then, but there was another guitarist in Deep Purple, Mr. Richie Blackmore, uh, come back this year and plug his guitar back in. Did you see any footage of that? Mm, yeah, I did. Um, you know, look, all I have to say about Richie is, is that He's 72 now. Yeah. Um, if I'm lucky, I'll get to be 72. Uh, Richie is an oddball in in the in all the respect. Um, I only want to wish him a happy life. He talks about not being happy. He wants to be angry or whatever he whatever he wants to do, whatever he does in his life. He's a strange dude. But um, I just want to wish him only the very, very best. I had a great time working with him, and um, uh, I hope he continues forever. I hope so too. And um, just before we wrap this up, this interview, we we're talking about some of the old people we've played with in the past. But um, more recently in Cambridge, I saw you at the Cambridge Junction. That night you had a young lady joined you on the stage, Lynn Jackman. So yeah. tell us more about her. She's a lovely girl. Um, I met Lynn. High voltage when we did BCC. Oh, in two thousand eleven. Yeah. Yeah, and and um, I'm thinking, okay, there's a girl playing in a rock band here, but she's a soul singer, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, I'm kind of, what I do in the ma in the male part of it. So we've kept in touch with each other. I've always she sends me little bits of pieces of music, and I just thought, 
I'd ask Lynn if she'd like to come down and sing with me in Cambridge, and she was great. Yeah, it's fabulous. She's fashion, inside. Yeah. She's in one of the greatest singers we have in the UK. Do you uh, listen to much upcoming artists of new bands? Oh, Mark, I mean, I don't get a chance to listen to that many. I, th there are a few. Rainwolf, uh, a Canadian guy, I really like a lot. Oh. You know, so it's just the occasional one or two that's jump into my radar. Yeah. You know, I, I like to be turned. I, I love it when I get turned on to something great. You'll see the lights go on. I, I look. I want to be blown away. I want like you guys in the audience. I want something to blow me away so I can raise my game too. It's something I just love. I, I love musicians, yeah. young or old. And what advice can you give to a young upcoming musician? Or Walk band? through the fear. Fear is the killer because if you have the fear, you're going to lose the prospect of losing your voice if you can't breathe right, or you, if you're too nervous, you're sweaty, and you. It's like it's you got to have to be very, very in the moment and very free, and just you can't have any fear. Excellent. Glenn, it's a pleasure to talk to you as always. Always, Mark. Uh, Black Country Communion 4 is out on September the 22nd on Mascot Records, and you're playing um, Wolverhampton Civic Hall on January the 2nd, 2nd January. and also Hammersmith Odeon. On the 4th, tickets will be gone in yeah. minutes, I think. <laughs> when was the last time you played Hammersmith, that a question? Have you ever? Um, yeah, I have. Many times. I guess I hit, my hair's so long that it gets <laughs> in my mouth. Um, I, I played there with, ooh, the last time I played there. I'm trying to think, you played there with Deep Purple or not? Uh, I played there with John Norum yeah. in 1988. Oh, right. <laughs> but I've been to the venue a yeah. many times. Yeah, it's a legendary venue. I played with Purple yeah. there three times. Yeah. But well, Defense him Apollo, we should say these days, but yeah. we like to call it the Hamio. <laughs> it's, it's always the, the Odeon for me. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, Glenn, wish you all the best for the future. You, and uh, I've heard the album. It's fantastic. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you.